This video was sponsored by Skillshare. You got a skill that you like doing but want some pointers getting better at it? Well, Skillshare's got over 30,000 classes to choose from, guaranteed to help you out. Virtually any ability you'd want to perfect, they've got a series of videos giving you tips and tricks on. If you're an aspiring rapper or producer, you can check out Samus' lyric writing course, or King Arthur's series on how to punch up the depth and quality of your sound when recording. Even if you're just starting out as a musician, they've got classes on fundamentals like vocal training, music theory comprehension, the basics of playing piano and guitar, seriously anything you can think of. And hey, if you start making some scratch off your skills, they've even got classes on how to navigate through the small business taxes of it all. The first thousand people who click the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription anyways, so if that sounds good, check out the link in the description. Hi guys, Rap Critic here. Let's talk about Young Blood. And yes, I'm gonna keep saying it like a lazy vampire, because he's the one who spelled it the French cheese way as a reference to the slang term for money, so damn it, that's how I'm gonna say it. But okay, let's check out his latest hit single, Your Mind Still. A track title that is already making me kinda wary. But hey, let's give it a chance. Maybe it won't be just another milk toast pop rap song. Maybe it'll be about something complex and deeper than we expect. Or he'll bring in a fresh new sound different than anything else out right now. Oh, wait a fucking minute. Are you serious? The exact same sting sample that was used on a recent hit song from a guy whose death the whole hip hop world was talking about not that long ago? That's the sample you went for? Get out of my face with this! There is absolutely no way there wasn't anyone on this promotional team that didn't hear the other sad boy emo rap song that samples pieces of my heart. This reeks of a cheap marketing ploy to siphon streams from an already popular song. And sure, people sample the same thing sometimes, but usually they do something different with it. They give it a different feel to the sound to make it stand out. But nah, not here. In fact, they've done even less with the sample musically, so it comes off as even more derivative. It's like the rap equivalent of that Asylum Studio company that makes cheap knockoffs of popular blockbusters. But okay, if dude's fine with being the transmorphers of emo rap, so be it. Well, to be completely fair, there is a bit of a thematic difference in the subject matter. See, the Juice World song was about being broken up with a girl and how she'll regret leaving you because of just how awesome you are. And sure, maybe it's not the most healthy sounding breakup song, but you could possibly still enjoy the catharsis it represents when it comes to leaving someone behind and moving on. But this song is about telling your ex to come back to you because you belong together. And to be frank, that's a topic that's a little hard to preach without specifically sounding, you know, creepy and possessive. So if you do approach it, you gotta handle it with care. Maybe start with a sincere apology, you know, to humble yourself yourself and set things up like you're someone who's willing to change and be a better person. And this song kinda does that, but it's not as strongly worded as you'd expect. If I ever made you angry, girl, just know that it get better over time. Yeah, he's not really explicitly saying sorry for anything, just a vague sentiment about how, hey, you know, if I did make you angry, eh, you'll get over it eventually, because I'm pretty sure our love is meant to be, so, so that means you should just kinda deal with it. Because, uh, you know, love and stuff. But okay, he, he's not a perfect person, right? And, and maybe he's just doing his best to find the words to express how he feels. Like I said, it's a hard line to straddle. You don't want to give off a sense of delusional entitlement. You, you want to express your yearning for the relationship in a way that reminds her of the genuine bond you had that hopefully sprang from a mutual, healthy... They say time heals. She can't see her life without me. She's so blasted. And you just dove headfirst into delusional entitlement territory. Okay, never mind. She can't live her life without me, because without me, she's just so blind. What kind of fucking pretentious ass lyric is that? Like he's some sage monk who's just shaking his head at her breaking up with him because of the breadth of knowledge and wisdom she's gonna miss out on by leaving him. But on the original version of this song, we learned that in their old relationship, dude was actively ignoring her. I pay attention to your heart, I play. So I'm not really sure what she's supposed to be missing here. And there's no mention of like late night texts where she's still spilling her emotions to him or anything. Just lyrics about how he's just really sure she wants him more than the other guy. And she don't want to go to sleep, she angry. Maybe she been noticing he ain't me. But I don't know, dude. I just heard you say. I pay attention to your heart, I play. So when you follow that up with a line like. Maybe she been noticing he ain't me. I really don't think this comparison's in your favor. Oh yeah, and then there's Drake's featured verse, which at least ends in a semi-interesting way. You should lay down, talk about it when you up. But she don't wanna go to sleep, she angry. Cause the end of Drake's verse feeds back into the refrain in a way that frames things as if maybe he's the man who's now dating young Blur's ex. Although I hope not for her sake, cause he sounds like just as much of a deuce, if not more so. I took you to the club and you hugged on somebody that I know, and I know the type of hugs. Is this motherfucker really getting upset about hugs? And I know the type of hugs, same shit I do to women when I know I used to fuck And I know they with they nigga, but they never brought it up 
shame on you, woman. Because the way you hugged that guy was an indication that you definitely had sex with him sometime in the past. And I know that's true, because that's the passive-aggressive way I act in front of my ex's current boyfriend. Nah, dude, but, but don't focus on that too much, because right now we're talking about you. However, to be fair, according to Drake's verse, the girl in question also seems to kind of suck too. Shame to tell my friends how much I do for you, because they know that you would never do the same for me. Yeah, they know you wouldn't do nearly as much for me as I do for you. And and if I know they know that, then, then that means I know that. So w w wait, why am I still dating you again? I wasn't looking for your secrets, they just came to me. And they contradicted everything you claim to be. Although with this line, it specifically sounds like the secret that came back is her wild-eyed ex coming out of the woodwork. And he's like, whoa, hey, I always thought you had good judgment, but goddamn. The guy who's saying this shit was your other choice? She can't see her life without me, she's so blasted. Like, jeez, what a line. Just the completely bonkers assumption that this woman somehow can't fathom the idea of living life without his guiding hand. And the video's not helping his case because it's about her getting married to another dude, so... It would seem to me homegirl's definitely ready to see a life without you. Ah, but I guess he saw her looking kind of sad in an Instagram video, and he's pretty sure it's because she misses the D, so, so no time to lose. Quick, drive down to the chapel and burst in before the wedding vows are exchanged to remind her what she's leaving behind. Better say that nigga you might. Which, to anyone there watching, probably looks like a bitter douchebag showcasing exactly how possessive he is in front of her entire family. Heard you been trying to tie that. Girl, tell me you lie. Well, clearly not, because you're in the church where she's getting married. Maybe be that pussy up one more time. Maybe be that pussy up one more time. Uh, so this is the part of the video where the best man tackles him to the ground and repeatedly punches him in the head until the police can come and take away the crazy man, right? No, of course not. In the video, she's swept off her feet by his bold declaration of love. And probably just, just a hit of Stockholm Syndrome. And so she flees the wedding with him, similar to the ending of the movie The Graduate. And the video actually stays faithful to how the film ends, in how they start off looking happy, but then lose their smiles as the weight of their decision slowly dawns on them. In the film, though, the character's motivations are a bit ambiguous, as you're not sure if it's really love or youthful to defiance of tradition that drives them. But in this song, Maybe be that see one more time. his motivations are very clear and, you know, pretty explicitly not romantic. So overall, I, I, I gotta give this a zero out of five. This is all around an abysmal experience of a song. It just fails at every level of being an I want you back type joint. It's just a weak, unoriginal beat and aimless tone deaf verses where the rappers seem completely oblivious to the toxic controlling attitude they're displaying that definitely feels like the reason she left him in the first place. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell button afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And this show is mainly supported by viewers like you, so please consider joining my Patreon where you can see episodes early, join my Discord, and vote on future songs I review if you're part of the new $2 and up Patreon tier. Plus, in my link tree below, there's links to my Twitch, merch, movie, and album review podcast, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.